Hey, sweet people, and welcome back to my channel. Or if it's your first time here, welcome especially. I'm Sally, and I'm so glad you stopped by. I am a nutritional therapy practitioner, and I share all things um, holistic health, nutrition, and lifestyle. And as you can tell by the title of today's video, I am sharing a little what I eat in a day with you. And if you can't tell by the lighting, this is actually future Sally coming to you. Um, I filmed a whole introduction clip, but the volume on my microphone was turned down so far that even when I turn the volume all the way up in post-processing, you cannot hear what I'm saying. So here I am um, just introducing the video. Eventually I figured it out and I turned my microphone up. Um, so I'm not the one, well, I am the one, but past Sally, we'll be talking to you later. But for this first little, first little bit, here I am. So I woke up um, and ate breakfast about 30 minutes after waking. I'm very disciplined about eating breakfast very promptly um, to help prevent my cortisol levels from continuing to rise throughout the morning. And this is one of the um, most supportive things we can do for our metabolisms because when our stress hormones are too high, that is going to suppress our a lot of our other hormones, progesterone being one in particular. Um, and it also is having a direct effect on your metabolism by suppressing your thyroid um, and telling your body essentially that it is in a state of stress and that it needs to conserve, conserve, conserve and prioritize only essential function. And bottom line, eating breakfast is important. So I wake up, I make my breakfast. I focus on a big and very high protein breakfast. Now, as you saw, from my preparation this is actually a massive breakfast for me and generally speaking i can't eat it all in one sitting so something i will do is i'll just like make everything i want all of the protein i want i like to make sure that i have some fruit um, of course i need some carbohydrates i tend to like to go a little bit lower carbohydrate in the morning that just feels best for me um but i try to make sure i have some fruit in there so that i'm getting fiber and of course Carbohydrates are important to have some of. Um, but what I'll do is I will eat part of my breakfast as much as I can comfortably, and then I'll just set it aside. And usually about an hour or so later, I will return to it and I'll finish it. It'll end up being a little snack, but that works really well for me. And that's something I will recommend to a lot of clients. Um, is if you can't eat all that protein in one sitting, that's okay. Just go ahead and make it and save it for later. So with that being said, please understand that this video is just what works really well for me. Every body is a little bit different, um, especially when it comes to caloric needs, macronutrient ratios. If you are in a place right now where you're really looking for support in your health and figuring out your nutrition, um, whether it's generally or whether you are looking to support some specific goals, you can actually go to the link in the description box and um, you can apply or sign up to have a discovery call with me and we can see if we'd be a good fit working together. But okay, what did I want to touch on? What did I want to touch on? We talked about protein. We talked about um, eating pretty promptly upon waking. So the other thing is you guys saw me make my coffee. I'm actually gonna wait to drink my coffee until after my breakfast. And this is something else I am very disciplined about um, is drinking my coffee after I've eaten my breakfast because coffee is a metabolic stimulant. Caffeine can actually be really supportive, but we have to keep it in the proper context. So if we have it on an empty stomach or rather when we're not fully nourished, it can continue to drive up our stress hormones, um, not allowing them to come back down because 
bottom line i could talk for ages about this but it can trigger essentially a low blood sugar response um, to the extent that your body is saying it's in a state of emergency and it's relying on those stress hormones to bring your blood sugar back up so we want to make sure we have a full belly before we have coffee and that's what i'm doing but I, i'm going to eat my breakfast i like to sit and have some morning time just have my coffee ready so i can drink it during all of that um yeah i think that's all i wanted to share with you for the time being but we will catch back up shortly with lunchtime. later and I am getting ready to make lunch. Something I found um, really more recently, I would say even in the past like six months, is that I'm able to go a lot longer between meals and feel good in terms of blood sugar regulation. So if you've seen others of my videos where I've talked about a pro-metabolic way of eating, um, I talk about, especially starting out, the importance of eating sometimes between two and three hours, maybe between three and four hours, but essentially not spacing your meals too long for the sake of not letting your blood sugar get too low and riding the blood sugar roller coaster. Um, so I've talked about how with time you're actually able to space your meals out further and this is something that I've experienced firsthand again probably in the past six months is just I'm staying full for a lot longer my blood sugar is not crashing like it used to and it honestly took me a long time to get to this point but it's been really rewarding to see that change. That said I still try to be really mindful um, to stay on top of it because even if I'm not feeling hungry, sometimes um, it can get a little bit away from me, especially when I am working out or just being active in general. So it's good to be cognizant of. Now this morning, exactly what I thought would happen did happen. I wasn't able to finish quite all of my breakfast in one sitting. I had maybe a quarter cup of yogurt and a few orange slices left over. It ended up working out perfectly though, because I went on a little run this morning. So I ran, I came back, I finished that as kind of a post-workout snack. If running or cardio and how to fit that into this lifestyle is something you're interested in learning more about let me know down in the comment section because i know that's something that can actually be a little bit more controversial um, in this pro metabolic space but as i've gotten to a place where my body is really supportive really more supported i am excited to explore how i can train like an athlete in terms of cardio strengthen my heart test the limits of my body but also just stay really well nourished and support my hormone health at the same time. Okay, so what you saw me just do before um, I hopped on to talk to you again was actually not preparing lunch. That is for dinner. Something I do most days is try to kind of get ahead of myself and start on dinner earlier in the day. Today that involved soaking some black eyed peas. I try to soak any beans that I'm eating to help remove the phytic acid. Um, and I do cook, cook them in the pressure cooker, which also helps to make them more digestible. Um, but ideally what you want to do is you want to soak your beans for at least eight hours. I use hot water, so some might say I could do it for less time, but I'll usually just use like boiling water and still soak them for eight hours. And then you want to get rid of the water that you soaked them in because that puts all the phytic acid or most of it down the drain. And then I cook them in the pressure cooker. So I have those soaking. I also went ahead and salted a pork loin, which we're going to roast up in the oven later tonight. Pork is a fantastic way um, to get lots of protein, lots of really complete protein in your body at a lower cost. Um, even buying high quality pork tends to be cheaper than buying other types of protein, um, at least a beef and you know, it's different than chicken, different nutrients. So. We buy a pork loin most weeks. Sometimes I can get sick of it, but try to mix it up, cook it different ways. Um, and again, it's just a really good affordable way to get high quality protein in your body. So for lunch, I um, we normally actually have leftovers for lunch. I make enough dinner to at least carry over into leftovers for the next day. Um, but last night we went out on a date night and we didn't eat here. so don't have any food. Um, so I'm going to cook up some grass-fed ground beef. You've maybe seen me make this super simple lunch in another video, but it's great in a pinch. Grass-fed ground beef, this is 93.7, so it's super lean. It's actually a little bit leaner than I prefer, but we picked this up at Walmart, 100% grass-fed, grass-finished. Um, and it's, we get it this lean because it's like the cheapest, if you look at, um, 
price per like gram of protein. So we get the 97.3 and then I'm going to add a little bit of fat into it actually. I'm going to cook it in some avocado oil. Avocado oil is a really good all-purpose cooking oil because it is a monounsaturated fat, very, very low in polyunsaturated fats and it can handle higher temperatures. Um, I also love olive oil. Of course, I love tallow. I love lard. I love all of that. Um, but I love how easy avocado oil is and its smoke point is going to be higher um, than olive oil. If you want to learn all about that, um, I have a video where I talk about PUFAs and oxidization, which I can link below. And also definitely check out basics, my starter guide, because I go in depth there. But anyways, we're going to cook the ground beef in a little bit of avocado oil, and I'm also going to roast up some potatoes. Potatoes are kind of a sneaky vegetable that I actually eat. Um, all the time because they're a fantastic source of potassium and a really good yeah carbohydrate source so enough of me talking let's make lunch Just cooking i'm snacking on a few sourdough discard cheez its that i made if you want to know how to make these go check out after this video last week's video on a week of sourdough it is uncanny how much these taste like cheez its i would say they're like not quite as cheesy but they have the tang and of course they're going to be better for you because they're not full of those polyunsaturated fats um cheez its have more vegetable oil in them than a lot of kettle chips do which is just ridiculous so these are completely free of um, vegetable oil um, and of course it is fermented it is sourdough so it is a lot better for your gut and usually i'm not going to do carbohydrates without protein um, but knowing that i had a good breakfast that i had that snack and that i'm actively cooking beef to eat um i'm comfortable with you know snacking on some carbs but I want to take just a moment to tell you about an incredible resource designed just for you. It's safe to say that the world of nutrition information is incredibly overwhelming. It is often outright contradictory. And even if you've reached the point where you know what is the truth, it's hard to know how exactly that applies to you and honestly where to start. That's where basics comes in. Basics, a pro-metabolic starter guide, is your comprehensive step-by-step -step guide to how to live a metabolically supportive lifestyle. We define metabolism, talk about what that really is. We talk about the role of stress, and then I break it down into what I see to be the three core tenets. We talk about blood sugar regulation, inflammation management, and nutrient needs, specifically how to meet your nutrient needs through food because nutrients and food are going to be more bioavailable than any supplement we can take. Even so, there's still a place for supplements. I have a section in the starter guide where I talk all about guided, targeted supplementation. I also talk about biologically supportive exercise, what that looks like, and then it all culminates with over 20 recipes that put these ideas into practice, plus a week-long meal plan which shows you how it all fits together. It just takes you step-by-step -step through the process, makes it easy to digest, easy to employ, um, and I can't wait to hear how you like it. So links in the description, go check it out. Uh, now back to today's video. Most days I like to have either a little afternoon tea or afternoon coffee. So I'm getting ready to make a pot of tea for Samuel um, and me to share. And then we're gonna head out to the gym in about 45 minutes probably. I'm still pretty full from lunch. Um, just finished that up like 45 minutes ago. So I probably have a really small snack. I have like one piece of sushi left in the fridge from date night last night. 
So I'm probably just gonna eat that and depending on how I'm feeling, I may have a piece of fruit or may have like a little spoonful of honey. I find with myself that sometimes I struggle to, or I just don't think about it really, get enough carbs in before exercise. And um, we were out skiing, I guess it was on Tuesday night and I feel like this really caught up to me for the first time in a way that it hasn't before and I quote unquote bonked is what they call it especially like in um endurance sports uh but it just reached the point where it was like my body wasn't working it was super clear that I had used up my glycogen stores and um just like hit an absolute wall so I'm trying to be a little bit more mindful of getting those carbs in um and a little spoonful of honey is I don't know, an easy, fun little way to do that before the gym. So we're gonna do that. And then we're gonna go pick up some magnesium. So you guys have heard me talk about magnesium before, but it's one of the very few supplements that I pretty consistently recommend. Magnesium is essential to our stress response. It's also the first mineral that is used up in a state of stress. And it is estimated that over 90% of the population is deficient in magnesium and this is because um there's soil depletion that's a factor but also it has to do with our water so water historically speaking would be our biggest source of magnesium but because of our um water filtration systems which are obviously necessary like we need to have wastewater treatment facilities to function in the societies that we do um that magnesium isn't there anymore and so it's important to get more into your system. This is something that we really try to prioritize. We ran out of our magnesium supplement, so we're just gonna go to Whole Foods and pick some up. We usually take magnesium glycinate. I find that this is the probably cheapest and most bioavailable option that I have access to. Magnesium bicarbonate, I don't think I've talked about that before, but it is another really fantastic option. And I think technically it is closest to what you would be getting through water. You can get magnesium bicarbonate, but it tends to be a little bit more expensive and magnesium glycinate just works really well for us. So that's what I take. Um, and yeah, I think that's it for now. Let's go make a pot of tea. back from the gym and back from our errands and I am incredibly hungry um, but as I said we would we did go to Whole Foods got my magnesium glycinate I'm gonna take three of these which is the serving size for 400 milligrams and then while we were there we also got a little snack I got just a beef stick the brand of this one is Vermont it was fine it wasn't bad I'm just way more of a beef jerky girl than I am a beef stick girl okay so I got that and then I got a banana cream olipop. I'm not saying these are the best for you. There's still like stevia in it. Not that stevia is awful, but it's still not the best in terms of what it does for like your blood sugar and your gut, for instance. Um, I think there's some natural, it says natural banana flavor. So that's a little bit sketchy, but these were on a really good sale and they are delicious. The banana cream flavor is the absolute best, um, at least in my opinion. So. This is my little treat while I'm making dinner. And we're gonna throw the pork loin in the oven. I'm gonna put a rub on it. I'm going to rinse off and drain, drain and rinse off our black eyed peas. And then we're gonna make grits um, with some Parmesan cheese. And the theme of tonight's dinner is proper preparation. We already talked a little bit about those beans, those black eyed peas and how they need to be prepared properly to get rid of the phytic acid, to make them more digestible. So let's talk about grits for a second. Corn really is one of those foods that just 
is not super digestible and it can actually interfere if it's not prepared properly with your absorption of other nutrients. Um, so proper pre preparation is really key. And you might be asking like, okay, well, there have been civilizations that have been eating corn for thousands of years. What is the case? It's ancestral. It is ancestral when you, um, it's called needamalization. I think I'm saying that correctly. The corn is essentially treated with lime and um, it makes it more digestible. So I have hominy grits, true hominy grits. This is what I use in anytime I have grits or um, when I make like liver mush or something like that. And it means that it is happy for my body and it's not inhibiting absorption. I considered also making some like garlic kale with this. That's another thing that um, I suppose has relevance when it comes to preparation because ideally like those dark leafy greens, you're gonna cook them. I've talked about this before, but honestly, realistically, I don't feel like making that tonight. So, um, grits and black eyed peas and pork. Here we go. supper it's gonna be delicious and I'm signing off don't forget to like the video please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already until next time